Hey everyone, it's Alex and welcome back to another video. And today, I finally finished this video. It was put on hold for the Let's Talk About series, and then again for the Medieval review. Then it was finally scrapped and I had to try it all again. But hey, it was better for this video in the long run. These are my top 10 favorite games as of now. Well, top 10 favorite games of all time as of right now. When new games come out, my opinions may change. This was very hard to make due to the decisions I had to make. And to be honest, there were two times I couldn't decide, so I put them in the same slot. Don't worry though, I like them for mostly similar reasons. Before I get to the rules though, quick spoiler warning. I don't hold back in a few places, and those parts of, are my favorite parts of the game or are massive parts of my critique. There are only th three rules to this list as well. First, there can only be one game per series. Yes, series. Spin-offs and side series can be on the list with their mainline counterparts. Second, ties are allowed, but in moderation, no more than the two that I included. The games on this list also cannot rely on user-created content. I'm so sorry to Mario Maker. Finally, no game collections. No Mario All-Stars, no Mega Man Legacy collections, no Zelda co Collector's Edition. You get it. Now, without further ado, let's get on with my five honorable mentions. Honorable mention number five. Team Fortress 2. I recently started playing this game and I'm absolutely loving it. TF2, or Team Fortress 2, is a multiplayer first person shooter with a lot of charm and character. The classes in the game are distinct and almost all of them are really fun to play. You've got classes like the Scout, which take the modern FPS trope of, you know, sprinting, and he's now the only one who can move super fast and he also has a lot of mobility options with a double jump and different unlockable weapons. You've got something like the Heavy, the slow tank, which is pretty cool to play. You have the Engineer, which can build supportive buildings, which is always nice to have on your team. And the Medic is just the healer, the stock standard healer, although he is, again, really fun to play like with most of them. While hackers and bots are annoying, like with any game, Valve has really cracked down on them, so they're not as common, compared to when I first joined the game, at least. I personally main Scout, Spy, and Engineer, but I'll get into that when I talk about TF2 more in depth. Honorable mention number four, Final Fantasy VII. I'm talking about the original here as I haven't played the remake. The game is the best Final Fantasy to many and I can see why. This action RPG has plenty of depth and a great story. Square knocked it out of the park and personally, I'm really glad they ported it on onto the Switch. Honorable mention number three, Minecraft. It's Minecraft! Mother freaking Minecraft! Do I really have to continue? Honorable mention number two, Super Mario Maker 2. Trust me guys, this game would have made the list, but the whole appeal of Mario Maker is the fact that you can make your own levels and share them with others across the world. Honestly, I wish that I could have put this on the list, and it was quite high up when I originally was thinking of this list, but I didn't feel like it was fair to put Mario Maker here. Either way, great game. I'd recommend it. Honorable mention number one, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Now, listen, I know Breath of the Wild got perfect scores, but this is my list. I love the atmosphere and art style of Twilight Princess. Yeah, some models look bad, but honestly, which AAA game prior to the Wii U didn't have at least a few things that looked off, or even look off now? Twilight Princess is about as Zelda as you can get. It perfected Ocarina of Time's formula perfectly. If you have the Wii U, get the HD version. Or if you have a Wii or GameCube, get those versions, as they're fine enough as well. Alright, with these out of the way, let's move on to the main list. Mega Man X4. This shouldn't come as a surprise. X4 is the best Mega Man X game. While I can't comment much on the story, the gameplay here is the best of the X series. I prefer to play as Zero, and Stardust and I have a ton of fun playing the game as Zero on Wildcard. In fact, we just finished it up. You'll be in the link in the description or maybe in the cards. Mega Man is a series that started out on the NES, and it's all about tough as nails, running and gunning, as well as platforming. You can get power-ups from defeated bosses, which can make defeating other bosses easier. Zero forgoes the buster, or the gun, here for Saber. He also doesn't get new weapons, but more like new abilities. This is slightly harder, but I think it fits the well-expanded movesets that the X games add. X4 also had a lot less bullcrap per minute than the other X games that came after, which is nice. Regardless, I'm awful at Mega Man in general, and sometimes that sparks rage, so that's why it's so high on the list. Super 
Super Mario World, and Super Mario Odyssey. Here's the first split. These games are here for the exact same reason. Precision. Super Mario World is a Super Nintendo masterpiece. It introduces a ton of cool stuff. Things like Yoshis, Charging Chucks, Mecha Koopas, and Magic Koopas that stayed around for a while, or stuff that hasn't come back since, aside from in Mario Maker, like Boo Clouds or Pea Balloons, or my personal favorite power-up of all time, the Cape Feather. Oh my word. Mm, such a good power. Anyway, Mario World can be hard too, especially in Star Road. This is in part due to the extremely tight and precise movement. It's always fun to play this game for me no matter what. Plus, if you get every exit, you unlock Autumn. That's neat. Also, Star Road in this game is the best in the series. Don't at me. Mario Odyssey, on the other hand, is a collectathon masterpiece. Yet another Switch must have along with Mario Maker. Precision here is in two ways, both in movement and design. Mario is so fluid and fun to control here, and it can lead to awesome skips and sequence breaks. It's almost Metroid-esque. Controlling Mario here is the best and most fun control I've ever seen in the 3D platformer. That's how far I'd go with this. This is also complemented by the insanely good design that the devs had for the game. In some places, the devs put stuff for you to find if you use Mario's movement in creative ways. This goes to back to my Let's Talk About Metroid video. Both devs understand player agency and skill and reward it. These two things combine to make an awesome experience. If you don't have the game yet, get it. It's worth your time. And if you have a Switch, might as well get Mario World 2. It's on Nintendo Switch Online. I mean, granted, the online function doesn't work as well, but hey, the Super Nintendo games are nice. Sonic Generations. I talked about this in my Let's Talk About Sonic video, so if you've watched that, you'll hear a lot of the same stuff here. In my opinion, this is the best Sonic game, bar none. It's almost glitch-free, it's the master of flow, it can actually be challenging. This game was the debut of Classic Sonic as a separation between the two characters, and this game mixes the classic 2D formula and the modern boost formula together to form a fun, cohesive package. The classic Sonic levels see you running through side-scrolling levels reminiscent of the Genesis games, and the boost formula is the same basic concept with an expanded moveset in 3D. Plus, the levels are all reimaginings of the levels of Sonic's past, making the game seeming perfect. While the story is nothing special, it's the gameplay and music that shines. The music on display here is heavenly, and I can't stress enough how much I love each and every track here. However, the reason why this is so high on the list, despite all of this, is the length, and the missed potential that goes along with it. There are only nine main levels in the game. I wish that we could have run through places like Stardust Duty Day Zone in a zone instead of just a boss level. Or maybe you could have run through an altered version of Westopolis for the fourth level in the Adventure Era. I understand for the three modern levels, since it was the modern era at the time, there were no other good Sonic games. But imagine instead of an underwhelming and short platforming segment in the overworld, you ran through a level that uses different parts of each stage as a final victory lap before the boss. Heck, the final boss even does this, where it has floating chunks of things like Chemical Plant and uh, Sky Sanctuary. Don't get me wrong, I love this game, but like most things, it has its flaws. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. This is by far the best Smash game out there. Ultimate brought back almost every previous stage in Fighter and added new ones. Then included my most wanted newcomer in the base game, Ridley, and my second wanted newcomer as DLC, Banjo and Kazooie. By the way, Banjo Kazooie is fun to play. Please, if you bought the DLC, actually play Banjo. It's, it, it's, it'll be worth your while. Anyway. Ultimate's gameplay is the most refined of the series. It has directional air dodging like in Melee, as well as Melee's high speed, but the game looks better than any Smash game. They also redid each previous stage from the ground up, at least graphically. The controls are the most responsive, and has the most unique mechanics. Smash 4 was home to Cloud's Limit and Ryu's special inputs as the only unique mechanics. But Ultimate has those two, as well as K. Rule's belly armors, Ryu's special inputs, returning in Ken, and having new ones in Terry, Terry's Gold Meter, and in Sinner's Revenge, and in the DLC, Joker's X to Arsene, Hero's Magic Power, Banjo's Wonder Wing, and Bilas Blandness. 
I'm just kidding. I don't mind violent Smash. All this without even mentioning the amazing gameplay of Smash Brothers. I'm sure you all know how it goes by now. Attack your enemy to build up percentage, which increases knockback, which is key to KOing your enemy. This game is the second fastest in the franchise, only second to its great grandfather Super Smash Bros. Melee. Unlike Melee, though, the game's mechanics are less exploitable, meaning that you don't have to rely on learning insane glitch tricks, and instead just focus on learning your character and the game itself. Plus, unlike Melee, pretty much every stage is legal, because the aesthetics can be turned to either FD or Battlefield. While the online leaves a lot to be desired, the rest of the game doesn't. The roster is heavenly, not only because I got my two most wanted picks in Ridley and Banjo, both of which I love playing, but because there are also 75 other characters without DLC, and 86 with both first two DLC packs. I don't know if they're going to release a third one yet. But either way, this is yet another Switch must-have. If you don't have a Switch, don't have this game, what's wrong with you? Go pick it up. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Time. This game is seen by many as a masterpiece, and I would definitely have to agree. These games are all about dungeon crawling, all about team and item management. The game is extremely fun, and to many, myself included, this is the best Mr. Dungeon game. This game actually has a decent story as well, with also the chemistry between you and your partner. It also can get brutally difficult, which I always love to see. The battle mechanics itself also mix together things that are in the main series as well as things that are new. You can use a basic attack that wasn't in the previous Mystery Dungeon game that doesn't require any power points but doesn't do as much damage and affects all types neutrally. Or you can use one of your moves which does a lot more damage but has power points and it also has the type effectiveness. It's up to you which one you want to try to do. You can throw items and actually use items to help you move through the dungeon or improve your skills in battle. And it all just flows together to form an amazing co and coherent combat system. The soundtrack is also really, really good. Pummel Dialga's theme, Palkia's Onslaught theme, and Craggy Coast are some of my favorites. Buy this game if you can. Trust me, it's really awesome. But before we move on, allow me to play snippets from each song that I just mentioned, and you'll see what I mean, and you'll see why I think that this game's soundtrack is such a masterpiece. Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Zero Mission. This is the other tie. The reason this time is because I honestly couldn't decide which is better overall. They both have basic gameplay that is not only very similar, but it's gameplay I adore. Metroid Zero Mission is a remake of the first Metroid game and it is the definitive edition. They re-added amazing power-ups like the plasma beam and the speed booster and the space jump. Sequence breaking here is top notch. And, as a matter of fact, so is regular exploration. Zebus has never felt so alive and open. I love it. Mix us with probably the snappiest and most responsive movement in the series, despite the hardware. This game feels the best to play out of any of the 2D games. The bosses here aren't all that special, mostly Super Metroid rehashes, but they're still fun. To top it off at the end, they added a an endgame stealth section that reminds the player that this is technically a successor to Fusion. But this time the stealth is actually fun and not just a glorified cutscene. Plus it is hard. 
Like I said, exploration here is fun, and finding skips and sequence breaks is part of the fun of this game. Plus, the movement here is amazing. Like, my favorite part about this whole thing is the speed booster puzzles, and that's part of the entire exploration. Granted, it just gets you a couple power-ups, but finding creative ways to use your shine spark is always, always fun. This game is amazing. Metroid Prime 2 is a first-person shooter with a Metroid skin and with Metroid gameplay as well. I mentioned this in my Let's Talk About Metroid video, but I feel Metroid Prime 2 makes it the best of 2D and 3D Metroid. The combat here is the best in the series, and so is the atmosphere. The scannable items are the most rich in the series, which is a nice touch. The idea of a dark world that has toxic atmosphere is really cool. The suits you unlock later on are extremely fun to use and useful to boot. The unlockable beams are extremely cool and useful as well, despite the BS ammo restriction. All of this mixed together made it my favorite Metroid game, but then I wound up buying Zero Mission and fully beat it. It threw my opinion a bit. Not that the Prime 2 got worse for me, but it actually had stiff competition now. I honestly couldn't tell you which one I like more. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, but specifically the DS original. This is one of the two games on the list that shaped what I want as a game. This was my first RPG and I'm glad it got me into the genre. The contrast between the bros and Bowser both in attitude controls and fighting style is amazing, plus the four button layout they had going is awesome. Just being able to basically control three characters at once feels awesome. I feel as though I should touch on the remake too, and say that the DS version is better in almost every way, in my opinion. If you have a 3DS, and not a DS, but you still want to play this game, don't even bother getting the remake. Get the original. However, I'm sure that soon enough you'll see what I'm talking about. Medieval, the PS4 version. Bet you saw this one coming, huh? Medieval is a gothic horror hack and slash for the PlayStation 1, which was remade for the PlayStation 4. This game is by far my favorite linear hack and slash. Medieval has a distinct style and gameplay loop that is extremely fun, and I did a review on it, so I won't go deep into gameplay, but know that not only is the graphics great, but the gameplay loop revolves around killing enemies to get through levels and save the kingdom of Galamere. There's also a collect-a-thon element to this, where if you kill enough enemies, a chalice will be able to collect it somewhere in the level. This sends you back to a place called the Hall of Heroes to get more HP, weapons, and money. I can't play this game for less than an hour, and this is just for two reasons. One, the game is so fun I don't want to stop, and two, the difficulty is just right. Just hard enough that you want to keep trying and keeps you engaged, but not so hard to tick you off and rage quit. This game is amazing, I don't know what else to say except for watch my review, as it is in depth as I could get with this game. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. This is another game I did a review on. I know a lot of people don't like this game, but I like it. This game has two control schemes, Warrior and Zelda. I used Warriors, and there's a reason for that. This game is a basic control scheme that makes combat feel nice, seeing as that's the whole focus it should be. Using the Switch controller with no remaps, B is dodge, Y is light attack, X is heavy attack, and A is special attack. You can mix light and heavy attacks for some sweet combos, and end it with a special. The gameplay itself revolves around defeating thousands of enemies to take keeps and defeat bosses. It's extremely satisfying to pull off combos and take keeps, and I can't stress that enough. If you really want to know more, then check out the review I did. The gameplay is simple, and that's what the game needs. Plus, the music is great. It's a great mix of orchestral and metal remixes. Pokemon White. This is my all-time favorite game. It's easy to see that. I mean, just look at my avatar. This game has very much influenced my taste in games in general. This game is the best looking Pokemon game, and many can agree. The moving sprites look amazing, and the move animations do as well. Not to mention the overworld style. 
It blends 3D models and 2D sprites with sometimes crazy camera angles, making for a really cinematic experience. The story here is surprisingly complex and rich for a Pokemon game, and in my opinion, it's the best of the entire series. Sun and Moons may overall be better written, but Black and White did it first. The Pokemon roster is also the best in the series with Pokemon like Gigalith, Archaeops, Electros, Golurk, Hydreigon, and for my personal favorites, Superior, Volcarona, Zoroark, and Zekrom. Yeah, sure, Sock and Throw are kind of bad, but every generation has stinkers. Yes, even your favorite generation has at least one stinker. The music, again, is the best in the series. Tracks like Route 10 are good by the nature of the very complex addition and instrumentation alone, not to mention where it falls in the story. Tracks like Vector Lies Before You, the track playing now, invokes a sense of invigoration as the gym leader is down to their final Pokemon, and this kicks in. And you feel like you could take on anything. Despite the fact you've only got a level 10 Snivy to your name, but that's neither here nor there. Overall, this game is so good, I play it almost every day just because I love the game. So that's it. That's all I got. All of these games are magnificent. All of them I highly recommend, and most of them I intend to do or have done a review on at some point. And I honestly had to work really hard to narrow it down to 15 games and rank them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I put a lot of time and effort into it between writing the script and editing it. I mean, the script itself was, I don't know, 12 pages long. Before we end though, I'd like to mention that all of the sources to the videos that I had to use for some B-roll footage in this video will be linked in the description. So go check them out if you can. I guess that's all I got though. So I guess I'll see you guys next time. Take care guys.